Uh, Maya Forstadt, Executive Director of Sex Matters, joins us. Good morning to you. Morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we talk about this delay in the trans guidance, I, I do want to ask you about the cancel culture. We've seen, you know, whether it's the Free Speech Union, the PayPal, and, and Justin Trudeau, with, you know, vaccine passports during uh, for the, to the truckers uh, in, during lockdown and the like. And we're seeing again and again more and more people are basically facing consequences to exercising their freedom of speech. You face the consequence of losing your job for a perfectly reasonable majority held view tweet about not believing that you know that, that men could become women and women could become men um there's no doubt at all that not allowing people to have bank accounts is is just an extension of that cancel culture isn't it it is I, you if you don't have a bank account you can't live you can't pay your bills um and everyone deserves to have a bank account nigel farage whatever your views yeah. it's not for a bank to judge the morality of individuals views or whether they agree with them or their values they should just be providing a service to everybody yeah it just it doesn't seem to be something that's controversial i'm amazed by how many people saying oh it's a private business like they said about paypal and the free speech union it's a private business but we do have restrictions on what private businesses can do in the same way that you were able to you recently got very i'm very pleased to hear you know a good payout quite rightly for losing your job at an employment tribunal as having won this your case and taking it to appeal court and the like because we don't just say to private companies you can just do whatever you want Absolutely. I think that there's going to be, have to be a few more payouts like mine before they start paying attention because yep. they haven't got the message. They really haven't. Um, I, don't, I do wonder also whether the government has got the message when it comes to how most women, I think most mums, most dads uh, and, and many, many people do feel about the issue of uh, trans ideology in our schools. Um, this has been an issue. We found out that the government is basically going to delay what it had planned to do, which was to publish advice, uh, guidance for schools, which schools have been clamouring for. Head teachers basically saying, I don't know what to do. Help me, help me. Give me some guidance what I'm supposed to do when it comes to dealing with pupils who believe that they are trans. Um, I won't use the phrase transgender pupils. It's, pu it's children who think that they are trans. That's a very different thing. Um, we would promise the advice before the summer holidays, um, which begin this week, or already begun for many schools as well. It's now not going to be, we think now, uh, un until September. Um, what, what, what do you want that guidance to say? It needs to be just common sense uh, that schools need rules and those rules need to apply to every child. The rules need to be fair, but it's not up for negotiation and children can't change sex schools just need to remember that yeah. there are boys and there are girls and mainly you should treat them equally and the same you, you know you shouldn't say that boys can do woodwork and girls do cookery we don't do that kind of thing anymore we're not in the 1950s yes. no exactly um girls can have short hair girls can wear trousers uh, girls can play football. We don't restrict children based on their sex, but there are situations where we do, uh, like changing rooms, like toilets, uh, sex education, uh, sports, and so on. And in those situations, you just have to be clear who's a boy and who's a girl. Yeah. And then in everyday speech, schools should not be telling children that they have to call a girl a boy and a boy and, a girl. And we've seen that. We have that extraordinary recording of two girl pupils talking to a teacher and being being told what awful people they were because they were saying, but but she's you know this girl she was you know she's but she's not a cat she wants to self identify as a cat she's not a cat and and they, were, and they were being so reasonable and articulate and basically stating facts and they were being told off for it and even told you should go to a different school I mean how that I mean I hope that teacher isn't still in a job I'm not in favour of cancel culture but that is so inappropriate I would call that gross misconduct by a teacher. Yes, I think so. Although, it, you know, it's so widespread, I don't think it's a question of um, getting all of these teachers out. It is a question of, of um, explaining the law to them and getting back to common sense. Yeah. So, it, you know, which is why we were really hoping that Rishi would bring out this guidance before the summer holidays, because if it drops in September, uh, you know, schools are back to school. Whereas if they have the summer to kind of think about it, absorb it, and particularly, you know, if they have a child who they have been calling by the wrong sex they're going to have to think about uh how they uh deal with that yeah and, and also you know, requiring other children to do it and this is the thing for, for me it's the idea that a teacher could be required and we see teachers basically being sacked as a result of this being required to pretend to lie 
that they think a girl is a boy or a boy is a girl and using incorrect pronouns. I mean, telling a teacher you have to lie is a really terrifying and slippery slope. It is, and it breaks the first rule of safeguarding. You know, you shouldn't lie to children. You shouldn't keep secrets with children. You shouldn't force children to lie. Yeah. Uh, that That's not what a teacher should be doing. Uh, and, and that's what they're told they should do, and they're made... Yeah for their job. Yeah. The key thing here is parents need to be speaking up and again you're not transphobic, you're not a bigot for saying that we shouldn't be you know, medically transitioning and, and uh, encouraging children, to, to often very disturbed uh, children who need a lot of help and love and kindness uh, and, and basically encouraging them to do horrible things to their bodies which are irreversible as well. We really should be uh, I really, really, really should be standing up on this stuff and parents need to speak out. Every parent who doesn't speak out is another parent who's going to allow this to happen to children absolutely but i do think the government should take responsibility what they've been trying to say is that children might be able to transition with parental consent nope. but that then just puts the pressure on the parents and yep. they're going to say if the parent doesn't consent that they're transphobic and yep. you know, threats of self-harm threats of suicide and all of that um what the schools what the department for education should be saying is we cannot accommodate pretending that a child has changed sex. Exactly. Really appreciate you joining us. You always just talk so much sense and you know, you, you've, you've lived with the, the reality of cancel culture as well. Maya Forstata, Executive Director of Sex Matters, thank you for joining us.